trying to get to Omaha to get back home to play for the national championship. And finally, the long wait is over for the Husker faithful. Jordan Larson serving it up to start the match. Winner of this one will move on to Saturday's national championship. Huskers are in white, the Bruins in their blue jerseys. Back row, Larson going for the kill. Kept alive by UCLA. Holloway, the back set, and Sarah Pavin puts it into the net. And so important to see early on how Nebraska handles the pressure. I asked Coach Cook yesterday, how do you handle it? Well, you'll be tight. He said, I have no idea. You count on adrenaline here. Caitlin Sather with the first serve. It's a good one. Gets Nebraska out of system, and now a chance for UCLA. Spicer, the quick set in the middle to Merriweather. Point Bruins. The crowd here in Omaha trying to fire up Nebraska. This is similar to the way they started in last year's championship against Washington. And they ended up getting swept by the Huskies. John Cook had to call a quick timeout in that match. And now they are down 3 zip. Yeah, John Cook time called the timeout at 2-0 in game one. And at that minute, we all knew something was wrong. This was an uncharacteristic performance. The Huskers need to relax here. Larson's pass and the set to Cooper, the freshman from Amarillo, Texas, for the kill. Danny Busboom, the senior from Cortland, Nebraska. The Big 12's co libero of the year this season. Spicer looking for Merriweather again. Husker's got a fingertip on it. Pavin tried to tip it over. Spicer went for the dump. That was blocked. Dug up by Bus Boom. And then long on the attack. Nebraska wanted a touch. They don't get it. Andy Banikowski said, you know, I think we'll be tight as well, but we have nothing to lose because we're the underdog here. We haven't been here since 1994. Nebraska's the one that's feeling so much pressure. Allie Daly, the sophomore from Grass Valley, California, transferred in from Long Beach State, where she was the Big West Player of the Year last season. UCLA with the block. Paven, the lefty, tried to cut it. And well, that one misses wide. Boy, UCLA. Not, a, not at all the start that Nebraska's hoping for. Their big gun, Sarah Pavin, with two quick hitting errors. Certainly nerves an issue right now. This is a Nebraska team that fell down two zip in their region final last weekend against Minnesota. Had to come from behind. For the first time ever in NCAA tournament history from two down, they rallied to win it to stay alive. And now Pavin gets the big swing. Pavin will now come out as Maggie Griffin comes on to serve. Maggie Griffin, a familiar name to Husker fans, was actually the starting setter a year ago when they ran a 6-2 offense with Danny Busboom. So neither one of them setting this year. Instead, a newcomer in Rachel Holloway. Interesting that Pavin came out and did not serve. She is second on the team in aces. As Maggie Griffin picks up the point, 5-3 UCLA early. At times later in a match, she'll come in to spell Pavin, but I think Coach Cook wants to give Pavin a chance to catch her breath here and settle down. Spicer looks to Merriweather. They're going a lot to Nona early on, and why not? She's coming through. Into the Bruins lineup, Rachel Johnson. Serving Colby Lyman. Merriweather will take a breather. The senior from Potomac, Maryland. Now it's Colby Lyman, the senior from Los Altos Hills, California. Pass shanked out of bounds. Point for Pavin and the Huskers. And that's the reason the Huskers play Pavin in the back row. She's so lethal in that back row attack, which is an attack behind that 10-foot line, the white line going across the court. Rachel Schwartz comes on to serve, a sophomore from right here in Lincoln, a former walk-on. Spicer. Carter's attack is blocked. Now the back set to Daly. Got it. Or Rachel Johnson, excuse me, the junior from San Diego with the kill. Seven four Bruins here in game one. Serving Nellie Spicer. Nellie Spicer, the sophomore from Barrington, Illinois. There's that one long. Point for Nebraska. Tracy Stalls will head back to serve. 
one of the co-captains, the junior from Denver, Colorado, an all Big 12 conference selection again this year. Spicer. Carter had it rejected. Larson and Cooper were at the net to send it back. And Jordan Larson, just a sophomore, I think the most improved player on the squad. She has become a leader. Four kills per game. Last year wasn't quite the player she is this year. Spicer looks to Sather. Chased down by Stalls. Free ball here for the Bruins. Spicer. And the kill for Katie Carter. And that's Katie huge Carter for Bruins fans because UCLA. Katie Carter yesterday suffered an injury on her hitting hand, Jordan jammed Smith. that middle finger on her right hand, didn't practice yesterday, today in practice, just took three swings. Coach Banikowski didn't know pain tolerance rise, how effective she'd be tonight. Holloway setting up Larson, popped up by Sather. Caitlin will get a swing, that's rejected. Allie Daly. As it dug up by Bus Boom. Here comes Paven out of the back. back and the whistle goes against Nebraska. Yeah, called for a back row attack. Illegal one, however. You can't touch the white line on the court at any time. If you're a back row player, you have to jump behind it. 9-6 UCLA in the blue jerseys with the early lead here in game one of the national semis. Holloway, Jordan tried to tip it. Back to Larson. This time she gets the kill. The sophomore from Hupper, Nebraska. Population about 800. So many of these Nebraska players, homegrown talent. And grew up dreaming of playing here. The two Dannys, Bespoom and Mancuso, in high school got excited when they learned that Omaha would be the host this year. UCLA trying to spoil the party. Rachel Johnson with another kill. In for the Bruins, not a Mary Weber. Reserved for a couple of years and now has worked her way into the starting lineup in this her junior season. Has a tremendous singing voice and often will handle the uh, national anthem at UCLA athletic events. All right, back set, Cooper gets the kill. Cooper, Blake, Nebraska. Into the Husker lineup is Danny Mancuso. Back to serve, Jordan Larson. Larson. Long on that serve. She has a lethal serve that can cause all kinds of problems when she can keep it in play. And that's the type of serve that you see from a player that's never played in an arena because the backdrop is new. But this is a team that's 5-0 and in the Quest Center over the last two years. They're the most experienced in this environment. This is actually a rematch as Pavin gets the kill of last year's regional matchup won by Nebraska over UCLA in this building. And Stanford, the other team playing in the next national semi, competed here as well. So Washington, the only team out of the four to have not played in this gym. Merriweather blocked. Stalls and Mancuso were there. Mancuso going for the kill. Well done defensively by the Bruins. And Caitlin Sather went for that deep corner. And you gotta love it. Anytime you can get a kill without actually attacking the ball, she just set that ball over and it shows that really the area of the court is better than power. Another strong serve. And Cuso tools the block. And already Nebraska really using the hands of UCLA's block. What makes UCLA's block good is that they're such a great serving team. When they serve tough, they make the offense more predictable and can block. But right now, Nebraska scoring points off of using the hands. Sarah Pavin, who is the front runner for the National Player of the Year Award. She already has won the Academic National Player of the Year, going for the double-double as Nebraska gets a kill. And that really brings the crowd back into it as Nebraska is within a point. Over 16,000 on hand here at the Quest Center. Now Sarah Pavin staying in to serve. We'll see her lethal jump serve after Cook gave her a break on the last rotation. Spicer looks to Merriweather to end the run, and she does just that. That's her third kill. In for the Bruins is Rachel Johnson. You see all the emotion. First, you see the athleticism and the power of Nana Merriweather. And then you see the emotion with the Tiger Woods-like fist pump. That's new this year. Last year, very quiet. They asked her to be more vocal on the floor. Spicer blocked by Stalls. 
Good setting to, uh, or good scouting for Spicer. She averages a kill per game. Aggressive offensively out of that setting position as Nebraska gets another point, and we are all tied up now at 13. And Katie Carter now with three hitting errors already, playing with that injured hitting hand. Sliding behind was Johnson. Nebraska, a long way to go to try and track it down. And Johnson gets the kill. That's her third. Spicer now will serve it. Holloway, back to Jordan Larson. Dug up by Lyman. Bus boom, pops it over. Here come the Bruins again. Transition points, that's something that Andy Banikowski talked about. Sarah Pavin tips it out of the back. And a point Kill for UCLA. Corner. They go up 16-13 here in game one. The Huskers' road to Omaha included that thrilling come-from-behind win over Minnesota after they were down to zip in the region final. And uh, that's how the whole trip to China really paid off for them. They'll get a point on that play. The other interesting thing, too, Heather, was that's when we started to see with the injury to Christina Hotelling in the offseason, they were switching from a 6-2 offense to a 5-1. They only needed one starting setter, and they had three to choose from, and that's when the battle for the starting job began. Yeah, it was really considered an audition throughout China. John Cook used all three of his setters. Ultimately, Rachel Holloway won because that girl right there, number three in white, Christina Hotelling, was not able to play, had shoulder and knee surgery. So Rachel Holloway, the redshirt freshman, won the spot in what John Cook calls the toughest decision he's ever had to make as a coach, picking her over the two setters that started a year ago in Maggie Griffin and Danny Busker. And that was Griffin standing uh, over on the sideline talking with Hotelling. Talk about the ultimate in team players. Danny Buscombe now the starting libero. Rachel Griffin only playing in 38 games this whole season, all in an effort to make this team as strong as it could possibly be. Home crowd getting a good antsy. Nebraska has trailed throughout this first game. UCLA not at all intimidated by the environment here in Omaha. They actually came into Lincoln a couple of years ago in the NCAA tournament and won on the road here in the state of Nebraska. One of the few times that the Huskers have lost inside the state Kill. boundaries. Haven gets Nebraska. the kill. And that's, that's just her, her, fourth. her fourth kill, but her third error. She is one that's been a little bit slow to start. Certainly, I think, feeling enormous pressure to get it done for her team. Holloway serving. Picked over by Daly. Holloway able to track it down. Now Pavin, the lefty, blocked. And again, the emotion from UCLA as Daly got up to turn it back. That is vintage Bruin volleyball, and they don't want this red sea to quiet them out. Jordan, that one's put back. Out of Pavin. The lefty goes deep for the kill. Really showing her worth on all areas of the court. We've seen kills from the right side here. She swings line down the left side. As a lefty, that's a very tough ball to hit. Point for the Bruins. If, if you're looking for Cinderella in the national semis, she did not get invited to this dance. But the closest thing would be UCLA, preseason pick number 10 in the nation. And it's been a tremendous job by Andy Banikowski and his coaching staff to get them back to the national semis for the first time in 12 years. They, too, have come a long way to get here. Kim's daughter, Nikki, transferred from Pacific to UCLA to be closer to her mom during her battle with cancer. And Kim, truly an inspiration. I've known her since I played in high school and was a rival against her when she was coaching at a rival high school. I, her courage has just truly been an inspiration to all of us. You see the necklace that she's wearing, that pink card actually has a silver 
breast cancer ribbon around it as well was given to her as a gift from Caitlin Sather's mother. Breast cancer has also touched the Lyman family. Colby's mom, a breast cancer survivor as well, touches a lot of us. Jordan Larson blocked Merriweather and Daly again. The block, Allie Daly, not a Merriweather. Just an incredible UCLA. story for Kim Jade at, at times as we take another look here, Heather. She would have her radiation treatments at 7 o'clock in the morning and then still make it to the 7.30 a.m. practice. Now Andy Banikowski likes his team to practice early in the morning. He, can, he gets to them before class, before any other social engagements they have. Feels that, that they, they really connect much better that early in the morning. Keeps them focused, and especially to see Kim following chemo treatment, which she went through until mid-September. And to see her be there bright and cheery every 7.30 every, every morning was truly phenomenal. Sather serving. Well, you know at UCLA, they are accustomed to winning national championships. And we talked to Andy Banikowski about that, and he said, boy, it's such an incredible environment around the, uh, the, the hallways and in the training rooms and talking with other coaches at, at UCLA that all have titles to their credit. Uh, just an amazing time to be at UCLA right now. Seems every time we turn around, they've got somebody contesting a national championship. They are going for the program's 100th in their history here this weekend. 26-17, Bruin lead. The UCLA led by 19 men's volleyball championships thanks to Al Skates and company. Al Skates here in the building to support Andy Banikowski and the Bruins. Andy played for Al back in the, his playing days in Westwood. That's quite a collection right there. They've both got over a 1,000 wins to their credit. Mancuso popped up by Lyman. Daly. Westbloom got to it. Pavin. Can't put it down. Spicer's dump picked up. Back row, Larson. Merriweather with the kill. And how about Nellie Spicer, the setter that's setting these Bruins to a 289 hitting percentage. She's getting Merriweather one-on-one. -on -one. Always the advantage goes to the hitter when you've just got one blocker. When you've got two, it's a little bit tougher. She's already got 13 assists to go along with four digs in game one for UCLA. Trying to put the finishing touches on it. And Jordan Larson struggling right now, not getting the kills, and now they're attacking her with the serve. UCLA, a great serving team, and taking away Nebraska's offense. Two points away from winning game one, which is so critical to a team's success in the history of this NCAA tournament. Merrillweather <laughs> kept it away. Net violation. Net violation called on UCLA, a point for Nebraska. And that's a huge break for Nebraska. They need to capitalize. This is a huge deficit, but they want to get momentum, get confidence, hit it, hitting into game two. Pavin will stay on to serve. Spicer, cross court to Carter. Larson there defensively. This is Mancuso with the nice cut shot. And up against a triple block to boot. Great vision by Mancusa to see that triple block, use her wrist to hit around it. We talked about uh, Christina hotailing earlier. It would be Mancuso is the one that stepped into the starting, uh, starting spot with hotailing out with the injury. The senior from Omaha, she and Busboom, the two seniors, have meant so much to this program, both in state. Both have switched positions to do what's been best for the team over the course of their careers. And now it's the Bruins forced to call the timeout. Two kills on 12 attacks. She's hitting negative at this point. Merriweather has it blocked by Stalls. Good coverage by Busboom. Now Mancuso. Lyman looking to set up Carter. Another good defensive effort 
by Nebraska. Wow. And Pavin gets the kill. That is Nebraska volleyball. A year ago, they were known for their intimidating block and their physical presence. Now, they're known as a scrambling team. Some great defense. Here's Carter with that injured hand, cranking inside the block. Nebraska able to dig it. Danny Buskroom doing a tremendous job. Once again, Nebraska scoring in transition against Katie Carter's block. Four unanswered now for Nebraska, trying to get back in it. Spicer to Merriweather. And now UCLA has stacked up eight game points here. Colby Lyman serving to take the opener. Westbrook's pass to Holloway. Mancuso. Daly was there. Spicer looking to Carter. Nebraska fights that one off. And Mancuso gets it between the block. Danny Mancuso, White Nebraska. Into the Husker lineup and serving Rachel Schwartz. And right now, UCLA with first swing opportunity at game point. Always easier to receive, serve, and score instead of serving and scoring off a defense. Spicer looking to Johnson. And UCLA comes into Omaha in front of 16,000 Nebraska fans and grabs game one in the national semifinals.